Hello, this is Ghost Rider 615, and I'm coming to you today, today with a reparations 6.0. This is number six in the long list of reparation videos that you have been seeing. And I'd like to tell you that when you're dealing with opposing issues and people, sometimes you need a moderator. And the moderator doesn't need to be one of the opposing sides. It needs to be somebody that's supposedly objective. And this clip that I have for you to see will be what I would call somewhat of a moderator. Now, the reason why I made this particular video is because We've been thinking about things in, in a manner of how reparations would do black people some good, okay? How the debt is owed to black people and Africans. We've been looking at it one-sided. So when you're dealing with the devil, you have to see, you have to let him know sometimes how it would benefit him. And then all, all of a sudden, sometimes, that might make a difference because he'll feel a little better if he knows how he would benefit from giving you what you he owes you. And so I'd like you to listen to something because if I said what this clip says, then nobody would pay attention, not even my own people, even though it's the truth. But let me let you hear it from somebody you do respect more than you respect yourself, more than you respect me, more than you respect your, your uh, ancestors. Let me let you hear it from your, your used to be master. Imagine a world where the wounds of the past receive a chance for healing. What if a debt unpaid for centuries finally sees its day of reckoning? Today, we delve into the intricate world of slavery reparations. The concept of reparations is not new. It has served as a means to rectify historical injustices, from the Holocaust to Japanese internment during World War II. But when we talk about slavery, we are talking about an injustice that lasted for centuries, impacting millions. The question we're exploring today is not whether a debt is owed, but rather, what are the potential benefits of paying this debt? Firstly, consider the economic implications. Duke University economist William Darity Jr. and writer A. Kirsten Mullen, authors of From Here to Equality, Reparations for Black Americans in the 21st Century, propose a reparations plan that could range between 10 to $12 trillion. That's a staggering sum indeed, but let's examine it closely. Reparations, in the form of direct cash payments, would dramatically increase the wealth of black households. This would not only improve their economic stability, but would also stimulate the economy at large. With more disposable income, these households would increase their consumer spending, which accounts for nearly 70% of the U.S. economy. This ripple effect would lead to job creation, business growth, and a healthier economy for everyone. Moreover, reparations could address the racial wealth gap, a persistent issue that's been widening since the mid-20th century. The median white family has nearly 10 times more wealth than the median black family. Reparations could be a step towards closing this gap, promoting economic justice and fostering a more equitable society. But the benefits of reparations extend beyond economics. They also hold the potential to bring about societal healing. By acknowledging and addressing the historical harms inflicted upon black communities, reparations could serve as a form of atonement, fostering racial reconciliation, they could help to break down societal divisions, building bridges where walls once stood. Now, consider the moral aspect. Reparations signify a recognition of the wrongs committed and a commitment to set them right. They send a powerful message that injustice has a cost, and it's a cost that society is willing to bear to right the wrongs of the past. But how do we move forward from here? The first step is acknowledging the importance and necessity of reparations. The second is advocating for them. Support organizations and leaders who champion this cause. Write to your representatives, express your views, and engage in the conversation. Reparations are more than just a financial transaction. They represent a commitment to justice, a recognition of past suffering, and a hopeful step towards a future of equality and prosperity. It's a conversation that's long overdue, but it's one that we, as a society, need to have. 
Remember, the course of history is not merely something we observe, but something we can shape. So let's seize the opportunity and strive for a more equitable world. The journey towards reparations might be long and complex, but it's a journey worth embarking on. Now, I'd like to tell you that you heard it yourselves. It's not whether the debt is old, but the positive aspects of paying the debt. If I heard correctly, we represent 13, maybe 14% of the population of America, but 70, we're responsible for 70, spending 70%, I mean, of our money, or are we responsible for 70% of the economy? I think what it says is that we spend more of our disposable income than any other group. And I think that it's been set up that way. So because we don't have uh, that many houses, we are usually staying in rented places, you know. Uh, we also spend money on things extravagantly to act like we are something that we're not. But reparations would improve the economy because most of that money is what we would call disposable income, and we would be spending that money. And I tell you not right now, don't worry about what somebody does with their money, okay? Because I tell you before, these Europeans had a chance to learn what to do with their money, they did foolish things with their money, okay? Because this is why they, the planters and the overseers and the... the, the uh, slave masters back in the day sent their children off to school, okay, to get an education, all right? You know what I'm saying? And so that they would learn what and how to act. But when they were in school, they were some of the most foolish people on this earth. That infusion of money could do wonders for this economy, okay? We're talking about the car industry, Lord knows, the, the nail and hair shops, you know, look, I mean, so, you know, we looking at money pouring right back into the economy. The money that you just gave away comes right back to you. But it would also end, put an end to this issue. See, the, it's not about if you owe it, you owe it. You're just trying to find good, re good enough reason to, to pay something back after all these hundreds of years. You come up with all kinds of foolishness. But that money could be used to pay back bills, loans, car purchases, IRS and student loan payments, okay? To make atonement for the things that happened in the past. To actually let our ancestors rest in peace, okay? And for for us to be able to hold our head high knowing that we fought the good fight for things that were owed to us, okay? Right now, I think that we are selfish people sometimes when we look at it. We weren't always like that. Everybody wants to make out like these people come over and they stay in one house, you know, and that's a new concept that they pool their money together and everything else, but y'all forgot about black folks and all the people that used to stay in one house when they moved up north, you know, when they were on the plantation, they always had to pool themselves together until you came up with ways to sow division, you know, and the Willie Lynch syndrome began to sink deeper and deeper into our psyche. I hope y'all hear me because, you know, looking at it from one point of view, sometimes, you know, May, may get you to a point where you, you start to feel like the master, but now you can see some positive aspects to this reparations and the restitution that you owe black folks. This is Ghost Rider, 615 out.